Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this theorem and prove it. And it says that a sequence of functions is uniformly convergent if and only if, so that's a, that's a two-way street, it is uniformly Cauchy or Cauchy, however you say it. And so uh, first I'm gonna assume the former and prove the latter and then go vice versa. So um, you need to know what do these two things mean? And so I'm not gonna define these things right here, but I will review them when they show up in the proof. So let's, let's start with this. Let's assume that this sequence of functions, f sub n, is uniformly convergent. Well, that would mean that if I let epsilon greater than zero, there exists some capital N depending on that epsilon such that for all little n greater than that n sub epsilon, the distance between the sequence of functions and the function that it converges to, I'll just call it regular f of x, is less than epsilon for all x in E, where E is usually the domain of the sequence of functions. Sometimes it's just a closed interval A, B. I'll just call it E for shorthand. And since I can make this arbitrarily small, I'm gonna make it less than epsilon over two. And you'll see this sort of trick happening a lot with real analysis proofs where I, I do epsilon over two or maybe epsilon over three, and then I add by zero and I do a triangle inequality business. Let me show you what I mean. If you remember what a Cauchy sequence is, basically the distance between two terms can be arbitrarily small. So for uniform Cauchy sequence of functions, I wanna show basically the same thing. The distance between two of the functions in the sequence is arbitrarily small, is less than epsilon. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll let m and n be greater than this capital N here, and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna do the classic real analysis trick where I add by zero. So I'll subtract f of x in here, and then I'll also add f of x in here. And then I still have minus f sub n. Of x. And then what I can do is I can use the triangle inequality to split this up. I'll split it up into the first part plus the second part. And hey, because of this fact here, as long as n or in this case, M as well, is bigger than capital N, which it is, I can bound both of these by epsilon over two. And epsilon over two plus epsilon over two is epsilon. So I've shown for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N such that for all M and N greater than N, the distance between F sub N and F sub N is less than epsilon. And this is for all little x in the domain. E, and this is what it means for a sequence of functions to be uniformly Cauchy. Let's look at the reverse direction. So this time I'm gonna assume that my sequence of function is, is uniformly Cauchy, which means if I let epsilon greater than zero, then there exists some capital N depending on epsilon, such that for all N and M greater than this N, the distance between f sub n of x minus f sub m of x is less than epsilon. And this is what we just showed the definition of uniformly Cauchy was in the previous part. So here, I need to know what is my sequence of functions going to converge to? I need like a candidate for f of x. And so I'm going to fix I'm going to fix my element x here in E. Just pick one little x and fix it. Well, that means this, this line here, this is no longer a sequence of functions, but just a sequence, right? If I evaluate each function at a certain point, that's just gonna make a sequence of numbers instead of a sequence of functions if I just fix it at one value. So this thing here, it's no longer a uniformly Cauchy sequence of functions, it's just a Cauchy sequence. 
you remember the definition of Cauchy sequence, it's exactly the same thing if these are just sequence of real numbers, which fixing x and e does for us. So I'm just going to call the limit of f sub n f of x, fixing this x. That's going to be my limit. And since it's a Cauchy sequence of real numbers now, a Cauchy sequence of real numbers converges, right? So I know that this is a convergent sequence. And what this means, since f sub n and f sub m have the same limit, since it converges, I know that there exists some n for all epsilon greater than zero, such that the difference between f sub n minus its limit, which I've just called f sub x, is less than epsilon, right? This is what it means for a sequence to converge. But this was true for arbitrary x and e. I could have fixed any old point. And what I've just written down right here, this is the definition of a uniformly convergent sequence of functions. And then so there we have it. I sort of uh, spoke more than I wrote down. If you were proving this in a class, you would want to write the sentences, which, which I was saying that, that since this is, a, this is a Cauchy sequence of real numbers, it is convergent. And then this, this statement of what it means to be a convergent sequence. So there you go, guys. There was the idea of the proof that a sequence of functions is uniformly convergent if and only if it is uniformly Cauchy. I hope you got something out of this video. If you'd like to see more videos on real analysis, please let me know in the comments below and have a great day.